our next presenter is Hattie. Hattie. Scholar Hattie is a graphic design graduate candidate at North Carolina State University, Wolfpack College of, College of Design. Research discusses how graphic designers use design tools and principles to preserve and tell African American history. Scholar Hattie. Hi everyone, my name is, um, I'm sitting because I have a lot of slides to go through very, very quickly. But my name is Cedric Eddy. I was born in Liberia, West Africa. I came to the United States um, 13 years ago. I got my undergraduate degree at Elizabeth City State University in graphic design. Currently I'm a um, graduate student at NC State where I'm mastering in uh, graphic design as well. My research uh, study currently focuses on designing for social impact and uh, cultural computation. How can um, I'm trying to find ways in which designers and developers can uh, can avoid programming biases into our machine learning algorithms? Uh, last semester, I served as a graduate teaching assistant for um, a sophomore design studio at the College of Design. Um, my presentation today pretty much encapsulates that experience, uh, inclusive of a project the students did in collaboration with the um, National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, Tennessee. That my main VR project, along with um, a, an immersive cooking experience I'm currently working on are examples of ways that designers are using um, uh, design tools and principles as a way of cultural preservation. Uh, uh, there are three touch points I just want to uh, go over just briefly to kind of put the presentation into context. Um, the first of these is the, um, the sophomore design studio at the, at, at the College of Design. Uh, each semester students enroll in like a uh, in a sophomore, uh, well, not a sophomore, but enrolling in a, in a design studio. And the projects in the design studio are meant to strengthen the ability to be able to identify and find design solutions to, um, to problems within the community from local to uh, sometimes on national uh, level. The second touch point is the National Civil Rights Museum in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. On April um, 4, the museum is celebrating the 50th anniversary of um, Martin Luther King. And um, they are considering installing the first ever virtual reality experience that I'll talk about briefly um, on that day as well. And the challenge they are facing is how do you, um, how do you implement this technology within the museum space when there really isn't any precedent um, on how to do so? And how do you direct traffic flow from in and out as people go and, and view the experience? How do you handle the ticketing? How do you handle um, sanitation of the, um, of the VR headset? Uh, and so forth. This is just uh, an image of the um, IMMA physical exhibit that's currently there. The third test point is the IMMA VR experience created by um, NC State Professor Dr. Derek Ham. Um, the, the experience has since won um, the Oculus launch pad, so it's becoming, uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, right, at, as current nationally recognized. I'll play uh, the trailer of it, and I'll go in more into depth on how um, the students tackle the design problem. So that's the, um, the trailer for the experience. 
and I'm going to go into the design process. The second part of the, um, the project was to, uh, to design an exhibition space in the museum where this VR headset or this VR experience would be placed. They didn't just want to have a table and have a headset sit on it and people come put it on. They want to actually create an immersive um, exhibit uh, uh, in, a, in a museum. So that was the students' um, design problem that they're trying to uh, tackle. So uh, most of the students at first wasn't very really familiar with the, um, the Memphis sanitation workers um, back in 1968. So they had to do a lot of research um, you know, on, on, on some of the events that led to the sanitation worker strike. Um, you know, they had to learn about MLK's involvement in the second strike that, uh, that ultimately led to um, his ass assassination at the Lorraine Motel. The Lorraine Motel, where the National Civil Museum is currently held, is actually where M MLK was, um, was assassinated. Uh, the students um, did a lot of interview with the, st with, with the staff at the National Civil Rights Museum uh, throughout the design process. Um, one of the, the most important part of, of, of that experience was that some of the students was necessarily aware of the, um, the, the implications or the cultural significance of, of the sanitation worker strike. So therefore, some of the visuals that they used in the design wasn't necessarily representation of, of the African-American uh, culture, for example, they'll use like, you know, Caucasians and some of the de designs or use phrases from JFK, even though it seemed appropriate, but in that context, it really didn't um, make sense visually. So that was some of the takeaways that they got through the interviews with the, um, with the museum staff. And I'm just going to uh, browse through some of the, uh, the design proposals that I actually submitted to the, um, to the museum. And they had seven teams, seven different proposals, and the museum had to pick one of the teams to um, to actually have the exhibit or the design installed within the exhibit. And this is, this, this is forthcoming, but a temporary one will be in place on um, April 4th during um, the celebration of MLK 50th anniversary. This team kind of, kind of took a more uh, retrospective uh, design approach. They wanted to kind of recreate the 1968, you know, what, how, how life was. So, so this is like the layout the, um, of the space in which the VR will be placed. This is like where you um, kind of go sit and put the headset on. So they kind of took like this retro um, uh, design route. They kind of, you know, you, you get into the exhibit, kind of go through the door like, you, like the workers did back in the day and after they left work, um, they have the trash can. And this quote is, is, is you know, it, it, it encapsulates the experience um, or the, uh, the, the mantra of the I'm a man movement, the slogan. This is another design. They kind of had a more modern um, feel to it. Um, using using these black and white images, the well, images of the, uh, of the people. They also had to handle like, you know, how, how the tickets would be viewed. This team really wanted to tell the story of the, um, of the sanitation workers, so some of the displays on the wall have actually stories of those people. Just gonna go through these. So you can see, this is um, this is actually the one that the museum chose to go with. They really appreciated the, um, these boxes, these light boxes. Uh, this is the last one. This one. Uh, oh, so at the end of of the project, you know, museum uh, staff and local design firms came and kind of reviewed the students' project. They had to create these um, physical models and. The, uh, the reviewers gave the mu museum some, you know, some tips as to how, you know, who they thought had the best design and helped the museum kind of choose on um, the winner. Uh, since, you know, at the end of the semester, this project last semester, at the beginning of the year, they have um, the project, have the students work in the, um, the I'm a member of experience itself. I kind of receive a national recognition. There have been several articles um, posted about their work. Um, this is an exhibition that was done at NC State um, at the African American Cultural Center, um, a lot of people came to um, in this opening. He said, "Just some images of um, of the exhibition." It was up for about a month, and I, I also put like a miniature um, exhibit on as well at the um, College of Design. This is just one of the um, the articles I was published on the um, on the exhibit and the VR experience itself. So that's it. Uh, you can follow, uh, see more of my work personally at my web website. Um, it has been a pleasure being here, and I'm happy to join other presenters to take some questions that you might have more specifically to, um, to VR or the sanitation workers. Thank you. Thank you so